All right, Chad Brindle, Tim Adams, in a uh, wet Nibbert Stadium here on Tuesday afternoon as the Cincinnati Bearcats get ready to take on the Miami Hurricanes on Thursday night, 7.30 game on ESPN. And Tim, I think the big thing right now is the injury bug has hit the Bearcats and hit them pretty hard. There were a lot of guys out yesterday. Um, of course, we know Keel. I don't expect Keel to play with a 14-day window between now and yeah. BYU. Yeah, him three weeks off, basically. Yeah, I, I think that's what you, especially regardless of what Coach Tuberville just said, that the, the, the Gunners are starting quarterback. I think it's also tough to take a young guy off the field that just broke a, a record uh, here for 557 yards and three quarters A great quarters Cook record. Yeah. I mean, that's saying something so I you know I know it, there is a big difference between a kid being called off the bench and going in there and having a week to think about it and, and then start especially against a team like Miami Florida but I don't expect Gunner to play we just heard I uh, asked about Mike Boone uh, he's not going to play so there's two of your playmakers uh, Tom Gresham had mentioned that uh, two of the fastest receivers that would be Johnny Holton and Chris Moore had lower leg injuries and um, to be honest, I don't expect them to play either. Um, so, and, th and there'll be some more that'll come out um, that people will see will be missing this week. But um, we don't really do injuries, talk about injuries here uh, at Bearcat Journal. So I'll just leave it at that for now. That's, uh, that's a lot of firepower that's yeah. gonna be on the sidelines uh, against a Miami team that, quite honestly, is one of the better, bigger surprises in the country with the success they've had so far. So far, uh, you look at, uh, you know, the win over Nebraska was probably the big win. I think they beat Florida Atlantic and then some maybe FCS school. Uh, they've that. fallen apart in years past. They have. And about this time. They have. Uh, but, uh, boy, when you, you know, that's a program that's always going to be fast. And um, you, you, you kind of hope, I think, that they're not on their game when you play them. Because if they are, they're, right. they're good. But um, Cincinnati will have a chance for them, and it's an opportunity for some younger guys to step up and, and play. And we'll see at least one freshman, true freshman, I think, shed the red shirt. Uh, people have talked about Khalil Lewis. That's a guy that I really like, and so do a lot of other people. And I think we're going to see more of him uh, this weekend. So, And for him, it's got to be a great motivator to go against a school in his home yeah. state like Miami, Florida. So. Um, it's going to be, you know, Brian Kelly always used to talk about next man in, and um, it wasn't a lot of feeling sorry for yourself during the killer regime. And right. I think that that played a big part in not just here, his success in Cincinnati here, but even at Notre Dame this year. Um, it seems like no matter who they lose, uh, they have someone ready to go in, and the Bearcats are going to have to overcome some adversity if they're going to hang with this uh, Hurricane football team. Now on offense, obviously, Brad Kaya, uh, an excellent quarterback for Miami, and, and as you mentioned, uh, they don't have Duke Johnson anymore like they did last year, but they've still got oodles and oodles of speed and talent at the skill positions. Well, yeah, you mentioned Kaya. He's a guy that had a great freshman year last year. He's completing about 61% of his passes right now with the five TD, only five TDs, but yeah. I don't think he played a lot in those first two games. The Nebraska game was the only game when they were really pushed uh, and one interception. So, uh, you know, he's got a good touchdown interception rate ratio. Everybody remembers Duke Johnson Jr. who's now with the Cleveland Browns, but uh, Joseph Yearby, who was also a hell of a high school player in, in Miami, um, he's still with them. And he had, I think, um, eight carries last year for like 113 or 117 yards. He's a kid not real tall, probably about 5'9", but he's a little, about around 200 pounds. Uh, he leads them in rushing. He's averaging over 100 yards a carry. And like I said, he got uh, Cincinnati for about 115 to 120 yards last year. Um, Herb Waters Jr., wide receiver, is a guy that I know they're very worried about. He doesn't have eye-popping numbers, but he's very fast. He's about six foot two. They got another receiver that's six foot five. You know, this is a team that one of the rare times that you're going to see an offense these days that doesn't use a lot of the spread. But they're huge. Yeah. This offensive line is as big an offensive line as Cincinnati will see all year. Everybody on that offensive line is 300 or more pounds. And once you get outside of the center, who's only you know 302, 303, you're talking about guys at 315 to 325 pounds. Uh, the right tackle, I think it is, is six foot eight. Uh, this is a big unit. And then they're going to have a, a tight end that's going to be about 260 pounds. They're going to have an H back that's about 250 pounds. So. I think for UC right now, as good as Kai is, I think they're going to try to run the ball and impose their will against this Bearcat defense, and we're going to have to see if 
if the Bearcats can stop that and make Kaya beat you with, with, beat you with his arm. Because uh, if they are allowed to just run the football, they'll just eat up the clock and score points and just beat the beat Bearcats down. Now, Miami on defense, obviously they're aided by the fact that if things hold to form, you're, you're not going to have Gunnar Keel, Mike Boone, Chris Moore, Johnny Holton. Um, but still a, a fast athletic defense. Yeah, they've always got speed. The one thing I don't think they have right now is a great a get to the quarterback, a great edge guy. Uh, so hopefully Hayden Moore has some time to throw the football. But if I'm them, I'm bringing some people yeah. after him. Because, um, and that's one of the questions I was trying to ask to Coach Tuggle today, what would he do against a young quarterback like that? And I think, you know, you disguise your coverages and you, and you bring some people and you try to get a pad on him because if he goes down, now you're looking at a situation yeah. where Jared Evans has not taken any reps at quarterback and is not in the plans to take reps at quarterback. So if Keel's out, Hayden goes down, Hayden Moore goes down at any amount of time, then the decision is a walk-on in Luke Wright, who's a redshirt freshman, I think, himself, yep. and a true freshman in Ross Jail who's never played in a college game, and you'd have to take his redshirt off. So now, now you're really uh, in, a, in a tough spot if you're Cincinnati. And I, I would to be honest with you, I wouldn't take the red shirt off of Ross Trail. I mean, unless this game, unless he comes in and you're down by 10 points or less, uh, why would I do that? I mean, yeah. I just wouldn't do it. Um, I, I'd take my chances with uh, Luke Wright or I just think Jared Evans should be back there. They recruit him as a quarterback and he's a second or third team, more like the, the fringe second team cornerback right now. And, um, he actually played pretty well in the SMU game, which was the last game he played. Right. So I don't know. I, I, I clearly don't know all the story behind that because I would have him uh, playing quarterback. Cincinnati opened as a uh, four, four and a half point underdog. It has been bet up to six. Yeah. Uh, with all the injuries. <laughs> the kid that breaks the record. <laughs> People are going, it's, well, they're going to be the even worse with this guy. <laughs> uh, with all the injuries and everything that, that's going on, how do you see Thursday night playing out? Boy, that's a great question, and um, thank you. How, how 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 will this team respond to this kind of adversity? And um, I'm I, I don't really know. I mean, I was at practice yesterday, and um, I think when you see some guys standing around on crutches and boots and braces and uh, that are key cogs in your team, and uh, I think there's a certain amount of disheartened performance that maybe goes out in a practice. I think this team in the past, although Coach Tuberville talked about today that he thought his team had a lot more emotion against Memphis, but in previous games like Miami of Ohio, we did not see that. Uh, I know people want to blame the coaching staff for a team not having emotion, but I, I personally think that's the seniors and that's the leaders of the team that have to generate that enthusiasm. You can have a coach jumping up, and we did have a coach jumping up in that, and all he got was ridicule. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I think that uh, the, the players have to do that, and will they be able to do it? Are there enough leaders to do that from this team of the guys that are left? Because we're talking about some, some leaders that are out. Keel's out, Whitty's out, so there's two of your five captains. Do these guys, that, do the Parker Angers have enough of that personality to make that happen? Um, Clemente Cassius, it looks like he's probably done as a Bearcat. Um, he was a guy that I thought had some fire in him. I think Zach Edwards has it. Um, but are there enough guys to, to go out there and, and turn this into a big upset? You just never know until you're tested, and they're going to be tested on Thursday night. So, what do you think? Well, I, I, I asked a good question, and you didn't even answer it. Well, well you, oh, I thought you were just saying, oh, will they overcome the adversity? Well, they, what, what, what's your prediction? Well, okay, my prediction, Come on. I always have taken the Bearcats just about every, every time. I think I remember once last year or the year before that you didn't. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I can't remember what happened. Because I'm more look, looking at the game than, than predicting what will happen because it's so unpredictable. But having said all that, I predicted 10-2 this year. The Bearcats already have two losses. But this was a game that I expected them to lose, even if they were at full strength. So um, I look at that Miami team and all the speed it has. I look at the Cincinnati uh, situation right now. And uh, this will be the first time this year that I'm going to have to say that I think Miami wins. And I'm just... I hope I'm going to be wrong, and I hope college football surprises every week, and uh, since I pulls off the surprise. Yeah, I think um, probably six might be a little low. I do too. I think it's probably a, a 10 to 14 point 
uh, Miami outcome as the game goes on. Um, but I think you're in a position now where you're getting some young guys a lot of experience and you're, you're throwing them into the fire and saying, hey, we recruited you here because of your athletic ability and, and because we thought you could help us and now it's time to help. And I think those guys are going to have to um, get up to speed real quick because I think they've got one in two weeks that they can maybe sneak out a road win at, at BYU after we saw what happened against Michigan last week. Now, granted, it'll be a third place, but um, I think this is a big game to play well. You can't, um, you can't come out here and, and get beat by 30. I would hope not. Um, speaking of B BYU, they're the total opposite of what Cincinnati. They throw, made some big plays at the end of games. Yeah. You could say maybe it was luck, maybe it was skill, or however else you want to rationalize it. But they got two wins that a lot of teams don't get, and Cincinnati could have had some wins similar to that, but weren't able to do it. One key in this game that I think uh, Cincinnati's got nine interceptions on the season. <clears throat> That's in have four thrown. games. Have thrown nine interceptions. And this is a Miami defense that has recorded seven interceptions, intercepted the opponents seven times in three games. That is a key stat. So, uh, if but if you reverse this, if all of a sudden Cincinnati does take care of the football, Cincinnati can get in Brad Cottage's face and create, create some mistakes. You're right in the game, get some momentum. This place, less than 2,000 away from sellout as of yesterday. It's supposed to be nice weather. It's supposed to be great football weather. And then you get that momentum rolling and you never know what can happen. But I, since I cannot, and everybody knows it, they cannot keep turning the ball over at the right. They're turning the ball over. That, to me, is the most important thing that's happened so far. Talk about the defense, they're not much better. I don't really agree with that. In today's college football, you just give up yards against good offenses. We saw TCU give up 800 yards against uh, Texas Tech. Is that Tech. a lot? Yeah. And you know, it used to be 400 was kind of the, the <laughs> high low mark. And uh, so I, when you, but the, this this offense that I think they're going to see isn't based upon the spread so much right. as it is about their speed and their quickness and pro set and having to get the ball in space and, yeah. and, and get guys to make plays, which they're going to have to tackle better since that. I mean, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, we're both wrong this time. Hopefully, and another guy that I'll mention with Miami, Florida, is Corn Elder. He's a guy that I followed during recruiting when he was in Nashville, Tennessee. He's a cornerback for them. He's a punt returner for them. Kickoff return guy also, and he's a dangerous guy too. He's great speed. Uh, he's returned an intercept. I think he's the only guy in the country that's uh, returned a kick for a touchdown and returned an interception for a touchdown. So they got. They just got so many weapons. Unfortunately, our friend didn't show up to run the steps today. There was a squirrel, though. I did see a squirrel there. <laughs> We're battling the adversity of this camera being slightly yeah, tilted. I'm, am I looking taller or not? <laughs> <laughs> but see, we, we're battling through adversity. Well, we didn't have our eye candy. That's a lowercase a in adversity. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> That's going to wrap it up. Cincinnati, Miami, uh, Thursday night, ESPN 730. He's Tim Adams. I'm Chad Brendel, BearcatJournal.com. All right.